looks like we're heading into another phase of lockdown mm-hmm. in certain areas. Do you think? Do you think we have enough to pull through by the time, I guess, the weather warms up again, or whenever they decide to lift the bans? Lucky Boys Podcast. Not only about being a nonprofit, but about these other mom and pop shops yeah in the community uh, what, what are some of those things so i mean at the top line it's and obviously this comes to no surprise but the numbers are real where businesses are facing up to 50 to 80 percent loss in revenue from pre-covid times um i think the thing that is unique to these business owners specifically is the connection that they build into the community and that realizing that if these businesses close down, the loss is irreversible. The herbal shops that you know are sprinkled all throughout the, the neighborhood, our senior population relies on these businesses to stay open because that is what they are connected to. They grew up using herbal medicine, Eastern medicine practices, if that shop closes, where will they go? Or like who, you know, what, what herbalist, herbal specialist is going to be able to tell them, you know, what to pick? It's, it's stuff like that. And, you know, one of our recipients of the Longevity Fund, which is a grant program that we started, um, told us that if, you know, if, if Welcome, China, Welcome to Chinatown didn't exist, that was money that, you know, he needed to help with the rent that he was behind on because obviously there's a lot of rent challenges as well um, without having proper bills in place to for rent protection or you know landlord protection even Um, for others it's you know they're using the funds to cover utilities PPE that they they have had to build into their operations things like that Um, I think you know despite all the challenges everybody still feels really resilient and feels like we will make it through. Yeah, I think one of the things also is that you, you, with these small businesses, as you start getting to know them, you find out that they're still truly, even though they're suffering, they wanted to give back. Like yeah. for instance, one of the businesses, I think it was, um, oh, I can't remember the name now, but he, we were, we pay the full price for meals for Feed Our my Heroes. My food house. My food house, yeah. thank you. Um, it was for my food house. And we, again, we pay full price for all the meals and he insisted on making us um, take a discount because he wanted to provide more meals to the frontline workers and the essential workers. And for me, that was like, that was pretty, um, that was such compassion, even though, cause again, yeah. it's not like his business was doing great or anything like that. Like everyone else, he was suffering, but he insisted on, on us getting more meals to these workers. And, and so you see things like that, that pick up, um, from each business where they're just, they're still giving even, the, and they're being so resilient. Is it, isn't in it incredible? I find some of these stories amazing where, yeah. During these tough times, these business owners, they're giving, they're finding ways to give back to the community yes, yeah. when they barely have anything yep. to give. Yeah. And everything, just all the pressures and all the stuff that's going on, they, they, they're not looking for a handout. Yes. Yeah. They don't have their hands out looking to get something for free or looking yep. to take advantage of anything. They, they, just, they just want an honest living and they want to help the community thrive. Yeah. And I think that's actually the spirit of Chinatown, right? Where, mm-hmm. you know, everyone makes these stereotypes about Chinatown meals being cheap or whatnot, but it's low cost because they wanted to offer food to the community at a reasonable cost, right? It's not like they wanted to jack up their prices to make more profits. The, the heart of Chinatown was always that they wanted to fend for their community. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think, and you still see that to this day, and I, I think that's what makes the community like remarkable in that sense. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the last working class neighborhoods yep. in Manhattan, right? Right. And the average medium income is, it, it's, I wanna say, I, I might say this incorrectly, I wanna say it's somewhere around like 30,000, 40,000, which is, we're in Manhattan. That's yeah. crazy. So that's why you do see prices at that rate because you have to be able to serve the community that lives there. And you can't be, you know, paying 18 bucks for a meal or, you know, I selfishly right. sometimes get the sweet green salads for like $15. <laughs> right? Me too. <laughs> Dagger. Sometimes. Dagger. That's like once yeah. in a month for me. I know, right? When I want to treat myself <laughs> to an overpriced salad. I, or I just go get some bok choy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, from the corner, yeah. from yeah. the corner um, 
food, food cart. Yeah. Vic, uh, Vic was stand. cooking for herself once and she she literally got three small pieces of bok choy and it was like a dog. And we were How do you buy three small pieces of bok choy? The, you know the they shrink when you cook them, right? The, the vendor let her. Well, she was like, I'm only feeding myself. And I was like, oh, you mean like three bushels or just no, three no, no, pieces? Just like three small pieces. Wow. <laughs> yeah. They do and shrink. That is why. They shrink a lot. Yeah. <laughs> And me, I was rich, rich, and we were just looking at her like, "What are you doing?" Anyway, but you know, she was still supporting the small, like the stalls on the yeah, side, yeah. so it's good, it's good. But I mean, yeah, it's it's crazy how much heart these business yeah. owners have despite the trying times. Mm -hmm. They are still continuing to, and it's not even just um, you know people that patron their business; it's also their employees. You know, like we were talking to um, Grace Young; she's a cookbook author. Um, she wrote this incredible piece at the beginning of the year called Chinatown Needs Your Love More Than Ever. And she did this tour around Chinatown with Jan Lee, um, who is, I think, like third generation um, uh, family that's grown up in Chinatown. And he's been a longtime advocate for the neighborhood. They went to a bunch of different places. Um, anyway, so Grace has been doing a lot of incredible work trying to shed some light onto Chinatown, um, tapping into her network too of writers, authors, reporters, and things like that. Um, she, she was talking to a business who said that they only opened because they wanted to give their employees work, you know, cause these employees have been out of jobs for at this rate, like what, six, seven months now. Yeah. And even though the owner, this is picking duck house, actually, I just remembered, even though the, the owner, he's, in his 70s he's still in the kitchen cooking oh, wow. and trying to just like keep the doors open so that way his employees have um have a salary have 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 income coming in that's just stuff like that is crazy to me it's like when he could probably at this rate in his 70s retire he still wants to give back to the people that have been loyal you know uh loyal employees for 15 20 years or so and it's it's, it's incredible do you I mean, I, I know this during the summertime, it, it, it did get a little better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it looks like, as of now, it looks like we're heading into another phase of lockdown mm -hmm. in certain areas. Do you think, do you think we have enough to pull through by the time, I guess, the weather warms up again or whenever they decide to lift the bands? I think the businesses will have to get creative about how they do it. I, I think that it'll take all of our efforts. Um, I, but I think there is hope, right? Yeah. Um, and we're doing what we can. I mean, the Longevity Fund, I know we didn't speak too much about it yet, but that is kind of our biggest initiative right now. The goal is to give $5,000 micro loans to um, 40 small businesses to help them meet rent um, and overhead costs. So, you know, th that money is what they need to do with it, whatever they think their most challenging need is. Um, and when we first set that goal, I think back in, I, I want to say August, maybe September, mm -hmm. um, 200,000 sounded like a lot, but we're happy to report we're 75% of the way there. Yeah. I think we're like 30 grand away from it. Um, and, and we've done some disbursements already. So, and you know, if the government ever steps up, some anything there w would help kind of get through, um, get through the winter months at least. But I, I think there's, I think there's hope, but I don't think there is, but it, it's going to take a lot. My, my yeah. concern is. I, th I think some will make it, but I'm afraid some, some won't. Some will not. Yeah, and we've yeah. seen yeah, there's some like, of that. Yeah, there's like over 100 Chinatown businesses gone, and yeah. they're not coming back. Permanently yeah. gone. Permanently yeah. gone. Not yeah. just, like, clo not just yeah. like closed for a little. We were actually just having this conversation the other day of what is success to us as an organization, what's also a failure to us as an organization. And it's if a, biz if a business closes is like the ultimate failure, especially if it was a business that we were um, supporting. And it's hard because, you know, we recognize that we we've been able to organically fundraise for you know these nine months however it requires so much more yeah. than just fundraising which is why we th that's why we actually started the longevity fund yep. because we didn't see any programs specific to um especially like minority communities minority businesses um especially um high immigrant populations too they just didn't understand know what resources were available to them or how to apply for them and things like ppp when that came out yeah. the the trickle down effect of it reaching these small business owners and how to apply by the time they are aware of it and then even being able to figure out how to apply for it those funds are already used up 